Morning everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you've been following me on Instagram, you've seen that a while back I bought an enclosed trailer. And this is it. I, uh, I'm in Ohio, I went down to Tennessee to pick it up. I am the third owner. And the reason for the video was uh, to give you guys an overview of what a bottom of the price line, we'll call it economy box trailer, gets you and some of the areas where I have found it to be different than what you would get if you paid substantially more. The price I paid on this on the secondary market was 4,700 bucks. I didn't even dicker with the guy, that was a good price. This trailer, as an economy trailer, brand new, I had priced at 8,400 bucks and the wait time was gonna be forever. Although this trailer has a manufacturer name on it, um, it's sort of my opinion through research that these are probably all made southeast of Atlanta. Um, <clears throat> I could go down there and pick them up all day long. Lots of advertisements where you can buy them for about five grand. Um, what five grand will get you is essentially this trailer, 24 foot long, six and a half foot tall with 7,000 pound axles, and that's not what this trailer is. This trailer is 24 foot long inside, not including the uh, crown in the nose, not including this, uh, this aerodynamic taper in the nose. It's got 5,000 pound axles, giving it a load rating of 10,000 pounds. So this is the sticker. It's got the manufacturer name on it for whatever that's worth to you. You see it's 9,990 pounds. Uh, 10,000 is actually the magic number where licensing and some of that stuff, titling, starts changing. So these are all, including my big equipment trailer, they're all right below 10,000 pounds. You can see over here that the axles are 4,995 pounds, oh, 5,000 pound axles. So front end's standard hookup, uh, two and five sixteenths ball, a manual jack. Uh, this is a pull away battery backup for the brakes in the event that the trailer disconnects from the tow vehicle. This cable, which is hooked to the tow vehicle, pulls the switch out. The battery's got enough poop to engage the electric brakes and she stops. Like most of them, it's got a little bit of stainless steel and aluminum on the front. Uh, nothing special here basic marker lights and this is where we'll talk about the first difference between an economy trailer and where you can spend more money if you want and that is this one has fasteners on the outside so all the fasteners down the outside that's the way trailers have been built for ever and for eons and what you'll see in some of the older ones is you'll see dirt marks below them and as these screws start to rust, in fact, there's cracking in this aluminum right here, um, you will see uh, streak marks of rust down the sides. Newer ones or uh, ones where you've spent more money, they have no fasteners on the outside. The skin is bonded to the frame. So that's one of the places where you can spend some more money. Moving back here to the back, these are just standard stamped wheels. You'll notice these are six bolt wheels. That is a good indication that, this, that these are 10,000 pound axles. If these were 3,500 pound axles, making this a 7,000 pound trailer, you normally see these with only five bolts, not six. But again, nothing fancy here. Looks like there might've been a wheel weight there at one time that took the paint off. But then again, looking at this other wheel, it's pretty apparent that the paint's just failing. While we're back here at the wheels, let's talk about the suspension a minute. So, most of these trailers are sprung trailers. They've just got leaf springs on them and electric drum brakes. If you find one that's way too cheap to believe, come down here and check and make sure you've got electric brakes on both axles. It might be a place where somebody decides to save money, uh, that being only put electric brakes on one axle. I can see that there are wires. You might be able to see that wire down there. There are wires to both axles, so I know it's got brakes on both. One of the places where you can spend more money is to get torsion axles. Um, each axle swings a little bit more independent. 
they give a little bit better ride to your cargo. And I can tell you from pricing that when you're in the new market, that's a thousand dollar upgrade. I didn't need that ride quality to justify a thousand bucks, so I was just fine with a regular sprung setup. This particular trailer has got stamped steel uh, frame members underneath it, or cross members, I should say. And then it's got I beam frame sections. It's doubled up here for quite a ways underneath the axle, and then it goes to single. So, pretty standard stuff. What we're looking at here is the underside of the floor. The floor in these trailers, almost exclusively that I have seen, is three quarter inch plywood. This is nothing special. You can see this is C grade stuff. It's got open knots on the bottom, and there's nothing down here protecting it from road or mo road grime or, or moisture. Additionally, it means that there's nothing trapping moisture in here. So one of my plans is to spray the underside of this as well as the top side with a deck sealant just to, uh, if nothing else, make myself feel a little better. Because this is from the secondary market, you can see there's a little bit of rust on it. It's not bad, it's a little bit of surface rust. The two previous owners used it mostly for storage and moving household goods. Although when we see inside, you'll be able to tell that there's been at least a couple of cars in it. So let's talk about this plate here. Sorry about kind of the washed out colors. All this little plate here is with these four bolts is a little bit of reinforcement for where you'll see the tie downs on the inside. This is how they make it so they don't pull through. They don't appear to be welded uh, maybe they are. Maybe I can see a little bit of a tack mark over there. It's uh, just two pieces. They actually only hit one of them when they put the bolts in. Two pieces of thin steel. Looks like it's 330 seconds maybe. Um, eighth of an inch. Nothing big or fancy. And in fact, something I noticed down here is the cross members back here on the dovetail, because we're at the back of the trailer, are actually smaller than the main ones by a couple of inches and that's to maintain ground clearance as the as the, as the tail frame member tapers down now right, let's get out of the grass so as i mentioned before this trailer is six foot six inches inside or i don't know maybe that's outside um, that is the standard height anything above that they'll charge extra in manufacturing um, i looked at taller uh, but when we go inside I don't know if it'll translate in the camera. I found 6'6", six, six, for my height being about 5'10", is plenty. Uh, I don't feel like I'm crowded from the ceiling. It works good. The door is also where you can spend more money. Uh, this is just a standard, uh, call them gate hinges and, and bar lock kind of affair. If you want to upgrade this, you would probably upgrade it to an RV style latch. And you say, well, man, that looks like a pretty serious latch right there. It is, but what an RV latch gets you is an RV latch gets you usually flush mount to the, to the outside, okay? So this little bit of a lip here you don't have, but what it also gets you is it gets you a latch that you can unlatch from the inside. And you'll notice this doesn't have any kind of an inside latch. Um, if you're wanting to convert this to uh, something where you might spend the night in it you want to be able to close and latch the door from the inside that's a pretty handy feature my solution to it is if i ever want to close the door and be on the inside i'll put some sort of a simple mechanical latch on the inside so here's the basic entry a little step up and you're in the trailer here's the top of that plywood again untreated uh, this is probably BC exterior grade plywood. God, I hope it's exterior grade. I don't see any grade marks on it, so I don't know. And again, an economy trailer, so nothing fancy. The sidewalls, I don't know if they're a quarter or three-eighths. I haven't made a hole in it. I know this little trim pieces here, if you can see them, are quarter inch. And nothing on the ceiling. Let's go talk about the back door a second and that'll allow us to get some light in here and we'll talk about the inside a little bit further. 
So this door's got a basic ramp back to it. Most of them do that you'll see on the secondary market. And it's got a torsion spring and a pair of cables to help it come down. They've pretty much all got a little extra flap right here. No muss, no fuss. So here on the inside, you can see the tie downs. The standard economy model comes with four of these. The option to add E-Track is an upgrade, etc., etc. But this is what eyeball height, so you're at eyeball height now, uh, for a guy that's 5'10", in a six foot six trailer looks like. I've got six, eight inches above my head. It's really more than adequate. Uh, unless you wanted to put something very tall in here, I think this is good. Previous owners added a couple of these little hooks on the sidewalls. Uh, those wouldn't be standard in an economy model. Because this trailer came off the secondary market, someone had purchased a pair of spares for them. When I priced a new trailer, these are 125 bucks a piece. That's spare and tire, so kind of factor that in. Basic trailers usually have one light in them. You got a little light switch here on the side, and they've got one little dome light here. The framing of the box is all inch and a half by one inch material. Probably pretty thin wall, but I haven't gotten into any of it to see it. It ends over into this little bit of an angle here, and you can see where they've put all the wires for the clearance lights and for the one dome light. All right, let's talk about the ceiling, because this is a place where you'll spend some more money. The ceiling on this particular trailer is galvanized metal. It's super thin. And you can see from this seam right here that it is a multi-part ceiling. One of the upgrades or one of the better features that'll cost you a little bit more money is a one-piece roof and a one-piece roof in aluminum. Um, I saw some options for those on different manufacturers. Again, for my case, this was just fine. The inside of the trailer does show a couple of leaks and we'll talk about those in a minute, but the multi-part galvanized steel ceiling had no rust uh, on the top to speak of, so I was very comfortable with having this. Again, with the trailer's age, um, it wouldn't concern me to buy it new this way either, you know, if saving a few bucks is, is where you want to go. Here's the torsion spring for the back of the trailer for the ramp. I don't know if there are other options for these, um, so I can't speak to it. Aluminum corner molds, or corner trim back in here, and then on the outside, and this trailer has LED brake lights. All right, let's talk about what I've found in regards to a gently used 2010 box trailer and the things that I'm going to be addressing that you might have to address as they age. First off, um, the hinges down here had been kind of neglected. There was some dirt packed into them, so it made the door shut hard and they hadn't been lubed. So that's just simple PM maintenance, no fault of the trailer manufacturer. I also saw this when I bought it, this discoloration in the corner. And I was, I brought a ladder with me when we went and looked at it and I looked up in the corner and it was a pretty easy fix. I'll show you that on the top side. You know, I gotta say, honestly, that's really it. Uh, no, it's not, that's a lie. There was one other leak in this trailer and I saw this and you could see where this super thin little chintzy piece of Luan that they put up here had obviously soaked in some water. And the only purpose I can see for this piece of Luan is to stop things from banging, you know, stop this tin, which isn't fixed, from really beating itself to death. But here was the fail. 
this manufacturer and all their infinite genius put screws in back here from the top going down to hold this piece of Luan. That leaves a screw head directly in contact with the, the galvanized roof. So what had happened here on this side is it wore through uh, just from vibration. Unlikely somebody stepped on it, but that is possible. I would highly recommend not walking on this roof. Um, what happened is this screw head here that's right up in here just from vibration wore through the galvanized roof and left a little pinhole. So the previous owner put a little bit of silicone on it. Um, I'm going to change that out to uh, a, a piece of butyl tape, which will do a better, longer lived job. You can also see that I put a piece of rubber roofing in here and I'm going to do this over every screw uh, just to stop that from further damage. Looking at the roof, it's entirely possible that I got something else going on here because I see a little, a little discoloration. So I'll get up there and check. And that's really the problems that this trailer has. The one with the screws here on the top, that just makes no sense. I can't believe they manufacture it that way. Uh, if you buy a trailer, check for those screws, do something to insulate that screw head, that screw head up here from the roof itself, and that problem will never happen. Economy Trailers, your basic 6.6 uh, trailer is gonna come with one roof vent. This one came with one roof vent and one light. Honestly, with the door open and the back open, how many roof vents do you need? Uh, you really only need one. However, I like two, so I've got another one in a future video. We'll be installing a second one of these back down here in the back. While we're talking about upgrades, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to add several more lights. In fact, we'll take this one out completely. I've got four LED lights that uh, will go in here. I picked those up from an RV surplus dealer up in southern Michigan. I'm going to put those in across the top here. And then over here by the door, we'll switch this out from a single place light. I've got a, a gang of four. And uh, I got plans for three of them already. All right, we've talked about the roof and its issues from the inside. So here we are on top. And you can see the seam here on top, the multi-part roof deal. Uh, that seems about every, looks like about every four foot. And then we talked about the leak back here in this corner where the roof comes into this piece of side trim. You've got this self-leveling mastic and you can see based on where the water from condensation is sitting, there's low spots in this roof. And what had happened is right down here in this corner, so we're looking at the corner of the trailer, this had gotten pushed down and separated. And you can see I've got a little bit of pookie in here for now. Um, I'll be doing that a little bit differently, but I noticed it and I wanted to get it squared away right away. Now, another upgrade. There are roofs, there are roof systems that roll over the edge and your seam is down here. Um, some of the premium trailers have a, a different roof to them. So this is the spot above that leak that was caused by the screw. And you can see the guy I bought it from it put a little silicone up there, big blob of silicone. I'm gonna change that just a little, but it's working for now, something to worry about. There's another place where you want to do a lot of maintenance. Um, you can see the mastic, that the self-leveling mastic that they put down is starting to crack and deteriorate. That all needs to be cleaned up. And in fact, that's entirely possible that that's where the damage is coming from on the inside, where we can see the discoloration. Other than that, the galvanized roof doesn't show any signs of rusting through. Um, I, I'm pretty comfortable with this thing living a long enough life for myself. So let's go back inside and I'll show you what I plan on doing to this for upgrades and to improve its serviceability for myself. Additional upgrades to the inside, uh, second vent in the roof, which I mentioned earlier, more lighting in the ceiling, 
This isn't going to be a work trailer, so it doesn't have to light up like the like daylight. But I would like more. Um, as a as a maybe, back here in these corners, hanging down here, some small LED lights that would light up the ramp here or the ramp area as you approach. So that's an option. That one's pretty far down my list. Let's go back around here to the man door. I told you I was going to have four switches here. One's the overhead lights. One is going to be for a porch light. So I'm going to put a porch light right up here. And then also inside, which will happen in one of the next videos, is... Move, puppy. I've got a 9,000 pound winch that I'm going to mount up here in the nose of the trailer. One of the things I've said is I'm going to run this old El Camino till I break it. If I break it, I don't want to have to push it back in the trailer. So I'm going to mount a winch here along with a pair of batteries that I take out of my dually. Um, it's time to change the batteries before they fail. So the old ones will go in here where if they fail, it's not that big a deal. At the same time, I'm going to add a power converter charger combination so that I've got plenty of 12 volt power out here. Uh, I'll add a 110 plug in the wall, probably on that side. That'll be for plugging in the charger converter, not inverter. I'm not planning on inverting the DC back to AC. And then I'll run a couple of AC outlets in here just as it permits. Um, I don't really want to run them on the surface, so that'll have to wait until I feel like taking some of the paneling off the wall. Additionally, I've dreamed up a, a little rack for these two spares that will sit on the floor over there. Um, with the tapered nose, there's really no good place to put them on the tongue on the outside. Plus, then they're baking in the sun. I don't want to hang them on the walls of the trailer. Um, they're pretty heavy, and going down the road, I'm afraid they would make the entire box here rack so badly that it would wind up cracking welds over time. So I've dreamed up a, a tire rack that I'm going to put over here in the corner where the weight's on the floor, and then that'll give me a place to hang chains or uh, straps. So here on the outside, I mentioned that I want to put a little porch light up here. Um, I'll probably put a catch on the door. That's an easy one. And then the other thing that's going on out here, and I've already procured it, is I'm going to put a 16-foot awning out here on the back. I discovered that going to these events is fun, and sitting around and chewing the fat is even more fun, and having a shady place to do it's kind of nice. Um, Distance-wise, from the back of the trailer to the door is just short of 19 feet. Uh, a 16-foot awning is just short of 17 feet by the time you add all the arms and everything. So it will run from just behind the door to the back of the trailer almost completely. And that's going to be a good deal for not having to worry about going over the door and the door scraping it. Uh, you can see with a 6-foot-6 six six trailer, there's almost no room for the awning up there. And then if there was any slant to the awning to keep the rain off or create better shade, uh, you wouldn't be able to open the door. So the awning will start right about here and go down that direction. The last item on the outside is going to be a pair of uh, inset LED lights, uh, the big square work lights. So if you've looked at race trailers or maybe ones in the past or ones on the secondary market, sometimes they have big 500 watt LE, uh, 500 watt um, halogen lights that are set into the side. Those take a ton of power, um, get super hot, and are just not what you do with LEDs being what they are today. So I found a source for lights that look like that, set in like that, only they're big LED floods. So we're gonna put a pair of those in eventually too. Maybe some cosmetics. And that's about it. Um, right now, it does exactly what I want. I can drive my Elko into it, strap it down, and everything beyond that is just extra. So thanks for joining me. If you've been considering one of these trailers, I hope some of that information is helpful, some of those comparisons. If you want to see the upgrades get done to this trailer, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you folks next time. Later.